Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com, and in a previous video series, we went over the properties of gelatin, how to properly use gelatin, some of the sciencey stuff behind it, including its inhibitors and promoters. Now, in this video series, I want to talk to you about a common alternative to gelatin, and that is agar agar. Now, although agar has only recently, as in the last decade or two, started to emerge as a common gelling agent in modern Western kitchens in Europe and America, North America, I should say, agar has been used for centuries in Asia. It's basically their go-to gelling agent, even though they do use gelatin sometimes, agar is their go-to gelling agent. And agar is derived from, it's basically a polysaccharide derived from red algae. And right off the bat, if you watched our gelatin videos, you know that the fact that this is derived from red algae gives it a bit of an advantage in certain circumstances over gelatin because gelatin is derived from animal collagen. So gelatin can never be vegan or vegetarian, but agar can be used to create vegan or vegetarian gels. Now, one of the unique properties of an agar gel is what's called hystericis. And hystericis means there's a large differential between the temperature at which agar sets and agar melts. So as you can see here, agar actually sets at about 95 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit and melts at 175 to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a very large differential between the setting temperature and the temperature at which it melts. Now you look at this, at sea level, our boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So something that's 175 degrees Fahrenheit is extremely hot, meaning you could actually serve or you can heat up an agar gel as long as you don't bring it to a simmer or past 175 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can serve a warm gel, something that isn't possible with gelatin. Now, agar also sets very, very rapidly. It's a rapid setting gel, and it sets within a matter of minutes once it hits the core temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius. Now, this is opposed to a gelatin gel, which not only sets at a much lower temperature, we're talking 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius for a gelatin gel, but it has to stay at that core temperature or below for a matter of hours, sometimes as long as 12 to 24 hours before it fully sets all the way through. Versus agar, agar sets rapidly at its core temperature, making it very convenient at certain times when you need a gel that sets up and you don't have 24 hours to wait for it to set. Also too, you look at its setting temperature, 95 degrees Fahrenheit and 35 degrees Celsius is way above your normal average room temperature. So if you need a room temperature stable gel, or maybe you're making a gelatin dessert for 300 people and you're loading it all in martini glasses, and then you realize, well, hey, wait a second, I don't have room for this banquet for 300 martini glasses, so I'm gonna use agar because I know I can let these set out at room temperature, and by the time they drop or they cool below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, they're gonna set up on me, and I'm gonna have my gel. So that's another reason that you can use agar instead of gelatin. Now an agar gel visually can range anywhere from crystal clear to opaque, depending upon the source of your agar and where you get it. You're just gonna have to kind of play around with different sources if you want that really clear uh, agar gel. And also it has a texture of firm to brittle. Now, if you're not careful and you use too much agar in your gel formulation, which we're gonna talk about in our next video, you can turn a gel into something that's crumbly. And because it has such a high melting point, it's not going to melt in your mouth like a gelatin gel will. So it's important to make sure your use ratios for agar are proper, so that way you're not uh, creating a, britter, a brittle, crumbly gel that just doesn't have a good mouthfeel. It'll feel almost grainy. Now this firm and brittle texture can be improved upon. It can be made more elastic by the addition of sorbitol or glycerol. But in my opinion, what makes agar really nice is the fact that it has the ability to stand up to a wide range of pHs. So its pH tolerance ranges from the very acidic side of 2.5 all the way up to 10 on the pH scale. Now 2.5 is extremely acidic. To give you an example, I was making uh, last winter, I was making a uh, winter citrus terrine. I was having a real tough time setting it with gel gelatin. So instead we turned to agar and we took the pH of this acidic terrine and it was still at about 3.2. So agar had no problem 
with you know the the low part of its pH scale being 2.5, setting a 3.2 um, pH citrus terrine. So this is going to be a real good thing to use in acidic environments. Now, one thing that's cool about agar too is it cr can create what's called a fluid gel, meaning you can take the agar once it's set, you can gel it. And you then take the set agar and you place it in a blender. Sometimes you'll have to use your agar and kind of move it around a little bit. But you can actually blend a set agar gel into a thin puree. And this thin puree then holds up on a plate almost like a fluid gel. And we'll talk more about use percentages in our next videos. But that's another great reason to use agar is agar can actually create a fluid gel. So as you can see, going over the properties of an agar gel... Uh, because it's derived from seaweed, it is vegetarian, vegan friendly, and because it has high hysteresis or such a wide gap between its setting point and melting point, you can actually create a hot gel, which is kind of a cool little thing. Now, agar does set rapidly, which can make it extremely convenient, uh, but the texture is kind of firm and brittle. Now, because it has a pH of 2.5 tolerance to 10, then it can be used for a wide variety of applications, and it can also be blended into a fluid gel. Now, in our next video, we're going to talk about how to actually create an agar gel and also some of the things you need to be careful of, some of the pitfalls that you may fall into during the agar gel trade process.